Okay, I've been saying for a while, courage, courage is contagious and one person can change the world. Um, I want to introduce you to somebody that I, I found through The Blaze. There was an article in The Blaze um, about a book called Messy Grace. Um, and it, it's uh, written by a guy named Caleb Kaltenbach, and he happens to be here. And I wanted you to hear, and I wanted to hear his story firsthand myself. How are you doing, Caleb? Good. Good. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you are a guy, you grew up uh, in a family in Missouri. Yes. Okay. And your folks got a divorce. Mm -hmm. Your mom goes into a lesbian relationship. Mm -hmm. Then your father goes into a homosexual relationship as well? He never had a monogamous partner, but he came out of the closet and had a lot of friends. My mother was with her partner for 22 years. 22 years, okay. And you, so you were raised in, in, in a, a world that most cannot relate to. Mm -hmm. um, and your folks start taking you to gay pride parades and everything else. So tell me about that part of the story. Well, both my parents were college professors, uh, very academic, uh, very, very uh, political uh, in nature. My mother especially was an activist, moved to Kansas City, Missouri. She joined the local chapter of GLAAD and was actually on their board of directors, she and her partner. Uh, went to political events with them in the 80s as a elementary school kid. They took me with them to clubs and parties and campouts and pride parades. And I was really the only kid in my mom's community. There were not a lot of other kids uh, being raised by uh, two lesbians, much less by three people who identify as LGBT, you know, including my dad, if you want to right. throw them in there. And so I remember at one of the gay pride parades my mom took me to. At the end of it, there are all these Christians holding up signs saying, Jesus hates you. God wants no part of you. Turn or burn. And if that wasn't offensive enough, there were people trying to talk to them, and they were spraying them with water and urine. One of the people yelled, you know, they're spraying us with urine, which, I mean, that kind of stuff happened to my mother's community in the 1980s. Um, and, and I asked my mom, why are they doing this? And she said, well, Caleb, they're Christians. Christians hate gay people. Christians hate people who are not like them. And so when I saw that and I saw people in my mother's community die from AIDS and I saw their families ignore them and right. not want to have anything to do right. with them, I'm just like, oh. Right. You know. So these were not, this was not an exaggeration from your parents when you saw this. You saw these, these Christians right. behave in a very non-Christ-like manner. Absolutely. Right. Um, and then... So now take me, how many years later do you decide you're invited to a Bible study? So I was in high school, I was 16, I got invited to a Bible study and I decided to go. Uh, I didn't know anything about the Bible, I, I grabbed a... Everything you must have thought you knew about the Bible was oh, just evil. Evil, yeah, yeah, I thought it was a horrible book and so I grabbed one of my dad's old Bibles, it was a revised standard version, I didn't even mm -hmm. know what that meant, I guess they revised something. <laughs> and so I took it with me and they told me to turned to 1 Corinthians and we were all doing the thing. Everybody goes around the room and shares a verse from 1 Corinthians and I'm in Chronicles and everybody's reading these verses from Paul and I read a verse about somebody being impaled with a sword. And, <laughs> and, and, and my, my ninja disguise, you know, slipped at that point and they were like, well, where are you? I said, I'm in Chronicles. And they said, well, that's in the Old Testament. I said, oh, so is there a new one? I guess there's updated 2.0. Wow. And, uh, I kept on going back, and here's what I learned. Why, wait, wait, why yeah. did you keep going back? Because I was angry. I was like, man, I'm going to disprove what they say. Right. D dismantle it, disprove it, this is ridiculous. But what I learned when I read the Gospels especially was that Jesus was not like the people holding up signs on the street corners. That Jesus definitely did have standards when it came to how we live our lives and holy living, but Jesus had just, you know, like it says in John 1, 14 and 17, he came full of both grace and truth at the same time. And he was loving, but he held firm to his convictions. 